Here's a question, Star Wars fans. Are all of George Lucas's various controversial changes to the movies over the years on home and cinema re-release really that bad? Well, despite what most diehard fans of the original trilogy will tell you, the answer is no. Some of these changes are downright ridiculous and random for sure, but there are a few that make total sense, enhancing the movies overall. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 Star Wars changes George Lucas made that were completely justified. Number 10, new Wampa design and added shots. Luke's encounter with the Wampa in Empire Strikes Back is a standout moment from the original trilogy. It's the first time we got to see Luke really use the Force to move something with his mind, and it's the first time he got to use his lightsaber on another living thing. The scene itself is nothing short of harrowing, the dreaded Wampa lurking somewhere out of sight, ready to pounce at any given moment. Luke, strapped to the ceiling by his feet, is utterly helpless and at the mercy of this particular monster. With that said though, how about some added context, the idea of the stakes involved and maybe some extra shots of the Wampa itself. 1997 saw industrial light and magic artist Howie Weed redesign, reshoot and insert some now essential screen time for the Wampa. Showing it chowing down on some bones, blood dripping from its mouth, the scene was no longer just effective for kids whose imaginations could fill in more of the blanks, but a genuinely harrowing threat for our favourite hero to overcome. Number 9. Cloud City Expanded as far as film locations go, Cloud City is pretty impressive, at least conceptually. Essentially, it's a sprawling city in the skies of Bespin, tucked away in the clouds away from unwanted Imperial attention, overseen by the utterly charming and completely dashing Lando Calrissian. In the original version of Empire Strikes Back, Cloud City kinda just resembled a whole bunch of unending corridors with little sign of life. Honestly, the city might as well have been subterranean. There were no windows, few glimpses of the city outside, and even fewer things going on beyond the winding, bland corridors that were the subject of every shot and the backdrop of every scene. To some, it was downright claustrophobic. That all changed when George Lucas expanded Cloud City, knocking down a few walls and installing some windows to really accentuate the scale and magnificence of the overall backdrop. Granting all those tight corridors some breathing room and showing various different ships passing by in the background in the process. Number 8. Adding a scene to Jabba's Palace there have been some horrendous changes to the opening of Return of the Jedi, changes that even the most ardent of Lucas's fans would struggle to defend without at least cracking a smile. To some, the entirety of Jabba's palace, something that used to represent this seedy underbelly of Star Wars ephemera, a melting pot of bounty hunters and alien gambling dens, was completely tossed aside for a musical number sang by Cy Snoodles. However, there was one addition that seemed quite fitting, an additional scene featuring Ula, the slave dancer who's dropped into the Rancor pit after failing to please Jabba himself. The additional scene depicts Ula's tumble in more detail, showing her reaction as the Rancor cage is slowly lifted and her fate sealed. It's a small addition, but it serves an important function. Registering her reaction in more detail, we're able to sympathize with the character. Thus, Jabba is made to seem all the more villainous and depraved as a result, further earning his iconic status as one of film's most known antagonists. Number 7. The Removal of Cardboard Cutouts once you see them, you could never unsee them. The cardboard cutouts at the end of A New Hope were always obvious to some people and not moving whatsoever in what is otherwise one of the most memorable shots of the entire franchise, it was like a tiny stain on an otherwise perfect canvas. As you can see though, even the smallest alteration can make all the difference. The change is unobtrusive, but it drastically improves the presentation of the entire moment. No longer can anybody be distracted by irritating, poorly detailed cutouts, and we can celebrate the triumphant conclusion of this extraordinary film as much as possible. Number 6. Replacing of the Emperor Ian McDermott is a fantastic actor who most younger Star Wars fans will associate with the prequel trilogy. Though he's more heavily featured throughout Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, and Revenge of the Sith, McDermott did make his debut in 1983, playing the Emperor in Return of the Jedi. Seeing as how McDermott had played the character in four of the five films that had featured him at the time, it only made sense that he be added to Empire Strikes Back. After all, he's played the character in both the original and prequel trilogies. It just made sense to complete the set, bring everything full circle, and insert some much needed continuity to the casting. Plus, that original Emperor, yeesh. Number 5. Better Lightsaber Effects this improvement mainly applies to the first film, but the lightsabers have been drastically enriched throughout Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi as well. They just looked so washed out before, especially during the initial confrontation between Ben Kenobi and Darth Vader. In fact, at one point during the fight, Vader's lightsaber doesn't even look red. It looks like it has the color sucked out of it, drained of all personality and memorability. 
In comparison to the 2011 Blu-ray versions of the films, the originals just can't hold a candle. Lightsabers appear revitalized and powerful. The colors look more prominent and even the shape of the beam looks straighter and more elegant. Number 4. Close the blast doors, open the blast doors there's a fair amount of humor dispersed throughout A New Hope. Even during some of the more intense moments of nail-biting action, the film never quite abandons the whimsical, fun tone of the classic space adventure genre that it was aiming for in the first place. No, it wasn't until Empire Strikes Back that the series took a slightly darker turn, emphasizing themes of betrayal and hopelessness in the face of insurmountable odds. By comparison, A New Hope isn't anywhere near as brooding or dreary, and it's why it's so rewatchable. With that in mind, it's surprising just how many opportunities for additional humor were passed up in the original version of the film. Thankfully, these opportunities were later capitalized on in the special editions, giving a few select scenes that comical edge that they always deserved. In the original version of Star Wars, Han Solo and Chewbacca narrowly escape a group of stormtroopers through a closing blast door. Trapped on the wrong side of the doors, the stormtroopers radio in a command to open the blast doors. In later editions, an extra line was added to make this encounter slightly funnier. Just before Han and Chewie make their escape, one of the stormtroopers can be heard requesting to close the blast doors, only to have the decision immediately backfire as the two heroes vanish through the closing doors. Call it the most minuscule thing ever, but the whole tone of A New Hope is so enjoyable and so much of a fun ride that this stuff only goes alongside everything else. Number 3. Biggs Darklighter In the 1977 original version of Star Wars, Biggs Darklighter was something of a mystery, an enigmatic figure who was mentioned casually in conversation but rarely seen. Early on in the film, we learn that Biggs and Luke are close friends, who grew up on Tatooine together. We also learn that Biggs had left his home to join the rebellion against the Empire. During the final battle of Yavin, we even hear Luke request Biggs' assistance before Biggs' X-Wing is blasted into pieces. As if to make matters worse, despite the two characters apparently being childhood friends, Luke barely even registers Biggs' untimely death. In the 1997 version of the film though, all that changed. An extra scene was added that depicts Luke and Biggs reuniting in the hangar bay, finally embracing one another after being separated for so long. After Biggs' death, more emphasis is also placed on Luke's response, depicting him as mournful and empathetic, rather than just indifferent. Number 2. The Stormtrooper Corridor Chase One of many people's favorite moments from the original Star Wars, a scene that's been parodied and replicated to death, was made even better. To be totally honest, the original version of this doesn't really make that much sense. The Stormtroopers just turn around and realize that they do outnumber their attackers. In the version from 1997 though, Han chases the stormtroopers down the corridor only to emerge in a very crowded hangar bay, complete with a stationary TIE fighter sitting in the background. It may not make as much sense considering the fact that the stormtroopers don't appear to be aware of Solo's presence despite the base being on alert, but it's way more entertaining. It takes a clever idea and makes the execution even better, the epitome of what tweaks like these should do. And number 1. Return of the Jedi's Extended Ending the rebellion against the Empire clearly affected the entire galaxy. It wasn't just about a bunch of rebels raging against the machine, it was a far-reaching attempt to shift the balance of power. Yet, at the very end of Return of the Jedi, at the very end of the original trilogy, all we got were some fireworks in the skies of Endor and a fairly tame but enjoyable party with the Ewoks. To some, i.e. George Lucas, this was fine, but he wanted more. In later editions, the ending to Return of the Jedi was extended to include even more scenes of festivities taking place across the galaxy. Thanks to the change, we get to see Tatooine, Naboo, Bespin and Coruscant united in celebration at the downfall of the Galactic Empire. With everybody unified and optimistic about what the future may bring, that final note of the whole original trilogy just sings even sweeter. And those were various changes George Lucas made to Star Wars that, at least to us, sit pretty damn well. Let us know your favorites down in the comments below, and maybe there are some other ones that we totally missed. For now, I've been Scott from What Culture Star Wars, and I'll catch you soon.